Hey guys, welcome to my art vlog again. Today what we're going to do is we're going to do a really simple eye makeup. We're going to have like this, it's like a very simple look and it also allows you to be artistic so when people see you they'll be pleasantly surprised. To go with the outfit I have this adorable shirt. Now what we're going to do is we're going to apply the eye makeup first so I'm going to go ahead and start doing that. I will continually place this primer onto my eye, bringing it up to the top of the brow bone. Because this primer is see-through, clear, I'm going to go ahead and cover up all my eye to make sure that my color of my eyeshadow sticks on and has the brightness that it is required to have. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my shadow brush and from the James Charles palette I'm going to use the yellow color B and pack that on to the middle of my eye, branching out into my eye ducts and then coming out to the outer part of my eye before eventually ending on bringing that eye color up to the top of my brow bone. What I do throughout this process is I'll take the color B from the James Charles palette, continually packing it on until the yellow is as vibrant as I can get it, trying my best to match my shirt. Next what I'll do is I'll add the next color which is from the James Charles palette 518. It's the orange looking color. I'll add that to the eye duct and then the outer edge of my eyelid. Continuing to try and branch out a little bit leaving the middle of my eye yellow to add depth on the outer parts of my eye so that my pupil can come out and be more seen well. My brown color will slowly, as you will start to see, start popping. And then what I'll do is I'll take my eye duct and take that orange color across to the outer part of my eye to add more depth to the top of my eyebrow so that I can again make that pupil pop. Next, I'm going to add the next color on the James Charles palette, which is Your Kidding. It's a red looking color. I'm going to add that on top of the orange so that I can blend into the most darkest tone, which is red. Continuing to match the same thing as I did with the other orange color, taking it from the eye duct to the outer edge of the eye. My goal in this process is to try and from the outer corner of my eye make a wing shape so that when I add my eyeliner it can go up in a curved slant to match my eyeshadow. I continue to pack on the colors making sure they're as vibrant as I like it. Sometimes what I like to do is I like to use a blending brush which is a little bit bigger to just get those colors to mesh into each other trying not to have too sharp of an eyeshadow color sticking out. It should be a nice even blend like a gradient going from one color to the next. Next what I like to do is I will go back through the process adding first the yellow color from the James Charles palette B. I'll add that blending it back in making the yellow pop out again the lowest color tone and then next I'll take the next tone which is the orange and I'll add that back in with my shadow brush continuing the process over and over making the orange pop a little bit more and then lastly I will take the last color the darkest tone you're kidding which is red and just add that on to my eye and making sure that it's just vibrant enough still going in from one color to the next having that nice vibrant tone that is required in this look Alright guys, now that you can tell, I have both sides done. Now what we're going to do is we are going to add some eyeliner. So I like to use e.l.f. as you can see. e.l.f. And this is the liquid liner. It's easier for me as an artist to do. Now what I like to do with my eyeliner is I like to start out by the eye duct, just slowly bringing my brush across the tip of my top part of my eyelid pretty close to my eyelashes making a nice thin line bringing it right across the top of where I placed my eyeshadow. 
just trying really hard. Um, as you can see here, I'm placing my pinky on my cheek to give that steadiness, allowing me to move my brush across until finally what I will do is what I like to do is I like to take my brush down on the bottom part of my eyelid and just swoop it upwards until I finally have a wing and then filling it in as you can see me doing in the video. Next, I like to apply my mascara. I use Maybelline. As you can see here, my lashes, and I just put it on the edge. I'm going to now face paint on some flowers. So I thought we would use, since we got some pink in my outfit, I have some aqua colors we can use. Let me show you. So we have pink. I thought we could use pink, yellow, white. We will be adding some green. Alright guys, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add little yellow flowers, yellow and white flowers, and we also are going to have, I saw this look with this cute little bees flying everywhere, so I'm going to have like a little bee here flying. So let's get that going. So let me get some color on my little brush. I'm using a one brush at the moment. And a mirror to kind of help me out, as I always do. Now with my uh, one brush, I'm going to just feather out, just adding little teardrops until a flower is made, adding just several little flowers on my eyelid. You can see I've added some, and then I'm going to next take that same yellow color and add some dots in between the space on the top of my eyelid. Just adding it in pretty much the orange red part, leaving the yellow mid part of my eyelid. Next, I'm going to take the white face paint color and add a dot in the middle of each of the flowers, being the center part, the central part of the flower. We will continue to do that, just trying to brighten up the color over and over, adding a little bit of white, still using that one brush, as you can see. I'm going to be adding some refinements with the yellow, just refining the flower as I, you can see my eye when I look upwards adds a crease so I'll just continue to fix that up. Next I will add the bumblebee, making sure that the edge or the far part is sharp and then adding some wings with the white of the face paint, adding two wings, two teardrops on the top. And then later what I'll do is I'll add some lines, just adding some little sketches of lines with black face paint, making sure that the bee design gets its full finish, and in the end outlining my bee, as you can see. And there's the new look on both sides, guys. We got the nice paint and the bumblebee flying around. Awesome. Okay, guys, now what we're going to do is, as you can see, I need to do the rest of my face. I am going to cover it up with first this. Got this nice um, prime. It's Maybelline, and it helps your face like feel better. So we're gonna apply that right now. Here we go. What I like to do now with my primer, I'll add that onto my cheeks, both sides, and my chin. I like to add primer onto my face so that my pores don't get clogged when I add the finishing touches of makeup. And then I also like to add a little bit on my forehead just to make sure that all my areas are nice and clean. Next, I'll take some primer that matches my skin tone and I'll add it to all the parts of my face that I feel are irritated such as maybe pimples or scars or cuts or maybe areas that are redder than normal as you can see my cheeks are really red in this video from working diligently so I like to add just some foundation onto those areas so that my main focus is on my eye makeup and less on the areas of irritation around my face like you do in a canvas, I just add those finishing 
touches to make sure there isn't too much reveal. I'm gonna do glitter gloss. This is um, lip gloss from Mega Glow, Mega Glow, and it's Wet and Wild brand. I have some CoverGirl cheekbone lip gloss. I like to use the orangey looking one, which is right here. I like to do before I ever straighten my hair is I add fructus in it. This is the flat iron perfector. We are gonna straighten my hair. Whenever I straighten my hair, I like to divide my hair, having a left and a right side, and then I start from the front and just branch out to the back. As you can see, I'll just take the iron from the top all the way to the top of my head and just stretch it all the way back to the bottom, going over consecutively in several groups, bringing the back around part of my hair and just leaving that straightened part on that one side and then I'll go to the other side and repeat the same process starting from the front having a pretty small piece in my hand as you can see and slowly making the piece bigger and bigger before it's straight. I like to have straight hair in these kind of looks it just in my personal opinion adds some flavor when you have straight hair something unique and different. Sometimes you can do curly hair looks either one fits you well on hot days, it's nice to have straight hair so that you can very easily not get too tangled up from the summer heat. So I'll just continue to do that until I feel it's pretty straight. I have pretty curly hair, so I just kind of get like a pretty mild version of straight going on. I don't want to spend too much time on it. Next, I will brush it out, making sure to just have the look of my hair being exactly how I like it. I like to pull my bangs back and just smooth out both sides before I end in the conclusion of this hair look. Alright guys, this is the finished look. So you just kind of wear it around all day guys. So now, just so you know, in order to have faith, you have to first choose to live. So what does that mean? If you have something creative that you want to pursue, go for it. Never compare yourself to anyone else. You have so much worth and value for who you are. In order to choose to live first, that means that your breath is worth something. So taking action is also worth something. Love you. Thank you so much. Please subscribe to me down below. Here are all my social medias if you'd like to follow me. Thank you so much. Have a great one and have an awesome day.